Hey everyone, how's it going? I am Zerikon and I am back once again. Today I want to talk about ROM hacks and talking about and I want to talk about how you can sort of get yours set up. So I wanted to sort of uh, give two examples of ROM hacks and how you can set them up and sort of like get your feet going. So I guess if you're not aware of what ROM hacks are, they're basically just ways to take games and just alter them into either new experiences or just adding new additional stuff. Um, and, so, and so, yeah, so that's pretty much what they are. Um, and we're going to teach all this so i'm gonna give you two examples if you're sort of following along and if you're using uh retroarch and steam that's great if you need to know where to go go to your pc go to your c drive go to program files uh 86 go to steam go to steam apps go to common go to retroarch and you're going to go into your downloads and this is where you're going to of course have your roms and stuff um and we're going to start off, I guess, with this one. This one's the first one. Now, we're going to do a Super Mario 64 uh, ROM hack. And also, make, make this is very important here, is to make a folder specifically for your ROM hacks. Uh, if you do not have a folder for them, if you are want to play the game normally, then the ROM hack will be in the same folder, and it will attach itself to that particular uh rom and if you and it's gonna be confusing so like when you start up the rom you will actually be booting into the hack itself and you will not be playing the game normally so make sure you have a separate folder copy copy the game copy the rom into the folder and then just do that and then put the rom hack with that folder and keep your normal one outside and separate so that way it's safe but uh actually what i'm going to do here is i'm going to go because i just realized something before because for some reason, the ROM hack for Super Mario 64 did not like my N64 ROM. It liked my Z64 one. So that's something that uh, I, I'm my mistake there. All right. So you're going to go to where you originally had your uh, stuff. So for example, I'm going to be where is N64 stuff. You're going to go to the ROM hack itself. For mine, it's going to be sme64.zip whoops then you're going to want to unzip it and extract well un extract it to the place you want it to go to so we're going to go to uh let's see c i'm not going to go in downloads we want to go to c drive well here we go c can go to program files 86 we're going to go to steam we're going to go to steam apps we're going to go to common we're going to find retro arch here we go so retro arch there um we're going to go to cores no not cores downloads n64 and smb rom hack and then we're going to hit okay and as you can see it's right here now um yeah so we got that folder right there and actually what i want to do is i will want to move it and put it right in that folder there so do that so we have it here one of the most important things to do is to read the uh text files that come with it because the text files they will change how the rom hacks work will change with each rom hack so you really want to pay attention to each rom hack so here we go uh, for this one says, for example, how to get the ROM to run, you just run the tutorial. So, you know, you just run that, copy that, pull up your browser, just put that in, paste and go. Since it is dangerous for me to upload ROMs, I decided I would only upload a patch file, a BTS file that only contains my own code and my own model. Um, the way we use this file is, um, with every download, I put these three files. And I'm not going to like bore you with the entire thing like this is important to know but just because i already tested it i'm just going to go ahead so what you're going to do here is just go into here um you're going to go into flips.exe going to hit apply patch all right so there we go so the dot pps and then we're going to do that open that and then we're just going to hit save all right and the patch was applied successfully all right, so we can close that out. And then we're going to go into, oops. Eh, here we go, SNES. 
and we're going to be doing Hyper Metroid. So what we're going to do here, and thankfully Hyper Metroid was a bit easier to manage than uh, as far as it wasn't as picky as far as what ROM I should use. So we are going to do the same thing here, extract the file. Of course, you always want to make sure you choose where it goes to so that way it's running properly. Common Retro Arch, where are you? there you are. Go to downloads, go to SNES. Go to Hyper Metroid. There we go. All right. So here we are in Hyper Metroid. And yeah, I think that's pretty much everything you needed for this one. Oh, yeah, and then you just need to have the game. So this one uh, was different. This one. So this one, as you can see, is different. It also has controls and stuff. Um, so for this, it says that you need to have. Uh, being a ROM hack, this is a little bit of trouble, but still worth it. Here's what you need. Hypermetroid.ips. This will come with a README. We'll use this later. Uh, then you'll need the actual ROM Super Metroid. And if you're, uh, in this one, is notice if your Super Metroid ROM is 3,722 kilobytes, it is unheadered. If it is 3,073 kilobytes, it is headered. You'll need to download the respective version of the hack in order to, for it to successfully and properly patch. Notice. So, yep. And yeah, and so you'll want to go to learner.ips and you'll get that folder file. Um, I already have that though. Let me. So I apologize for that. Uh, what happened was I had deleted the original lips zip file from my computer, so I had to get it from my uh, backup uh, hard drive. So here is the actual uh, lips folder. So we'll want to go and extract the files, same as we did before. Well, Bash, this will be created if this doesn't exist. Oh, that's why. I'm sorry. I'm using the wrong thing. That's why I don't want to use uh, WinRAR. I want to use 7-zip. So yeah, it's going to be the same method we used before. Oops. I do want to be on this PC. Just not in downloads. Now just the same place. Well, not the same place, but... You will use a similar place it's still in Steam. It's still going to be in Steam apps. It's still going to be in Common. It's still going to be in RetroArch. The only difference is that we will not be. Let's go back. There we go. All right. The only thing, and we still will be in downloads. We just won't be in N64 anymore. We will be in SNES, and we'll go to Hyper Metroid. Hit OK. Hit extract. And here we go. And we got lips here. And we got the lunar IP. So we got the readme text. All right. And here's information here. And as far as I can remember, it was fine to run right out the bat. If it doesn't work, we'll find out. Because I don't think you needed to do anything special with it. Uh, or at least based off of my remember. Oh, wait. Now, one thing we will need, though, of course. No, I almost forgot. We will need um, to get the ROM itself. So we're just going to hop back over here into the other retro arch. We're going to go to SNES. We're going to go, let's see, where's Super Metroid? Super Metroid. Here we go, Super Metroid. Good old Control C and Control V. And there we go. And then just one more time, just to make sure that the uh, we didn't have to do anything special here. Okay. And it does not look like we have to do anything. So again, make sure. Oh, right, never mind. We do actually have to do something there. So yeah. Use Learner IPS to apply HyperMetroid.IPS to Super Metroid. Then load the ROM with your chosen emulator. So yeah, so we will actually have to go in here. We'll have to use Learner IPS.exe. Hit apply, apply IPS patch. All right. So we'll just want to go up. And then here we go. Hit that open and then this is where we'll get the ROM hit open and it was successfully patched so we can close that out and we can actually close all of this out because everything should work 
um, my controller was connected. So now we'll just pull up Steam. And if everything's good to go, we'll be playing some uh, RetroArch here. All right. Now, one thing I'll say is with... Uh, All right, yeah, we'll try this one first, Hyper Metroid, Hyper Metroid, and we'll see if it works. Yep, and here we go. We have Hyper Metroid up and running. Yep. Oops. And just like that, we can start. As you can see, it's definitely different from playing the regular Super Metroid game. And then, of course, that's because it is a ROM hack. <laughs> but yeah, and so, like, that's really all we can have to do here. We'll go ahead and... Uh, whoops, let's just quickly go to the... menu all right so we're going to close this out now and we're going to start the other one now for the for the super metroid rom hack this one was really finicky when i was testing it earlier like no, no, we don't want that it would only work on uh it wouldn't work, work on the other emulators i had installed the uh mupin it, it won't work on that i had to use uh, whoops. Yeah, I had to use... Wait, actually... Whoa. Well, that is a surprise and a half. Because it did not work with... Uh... Wait a second. Is it not... No, this is just the regular one. Wait a minute. Okay, I'm sorry. I made a mistake here. Okay, so for this one, you'll actually want to use the SMB64 instead of using Super Mario 64, because uh, this was the actual ROM hack version. But uh, it would not work on... It, it wouldn't work at all, originally. Yeah. And so this one was supposed to be, like, recreating... Uh... Yep, hello... Oops. 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 Nope. Oh, that's why I haven't. Con okay, never mind. I have configured it. But uh, before it wasn't working on anything. It it wouldn't work on my other emulator. So it would only work on. It would only work on Parallel sixty four. It wouldn't work on Mupin. It wouldn't work on any of them. So it's very interesting that, uh, oh, I guess we don't, okay, never mind. There we go. It won't work on anything else, so that was interesting. But yeah, so this is pretty much all you need to do to, if you want to get your own ROM hack set up. Just make sure you have the game, make sure you follow the rules, and that's pretty much it. But I hope that it helped you all. I hope that this was a good experience. I hope that this will encourage you to try out ROM hacks if you want to. You don't have to. Not all of them are necessarily good. Like, I'm not really a fan of Hyper Metroid, but it was good to try out at the time. But if you are interested, you know, you can look around for them. Just remember that you should follow every direction that the ROM hack says. And you should be good to go. If you have any other questions, though... Please let me know in the comments below, and I will do my best to address them. So until next time, everyone, I am Zerakon signing off. Have a good one.